Assalamu alaikum. Hello, my name is Abdul Latif. I reverted to Islam over four years ago. Alhamdulillah. Welcome to my revert story. If you haven't watched part one or part two, please go back and watch them. It will provide more context and help you better understand. In this, in this story, in this video, yeah, we'll look at my first time praying Jumah, uh, the difficulties of learning Salah, you know, the difficulties of being in a foreign country, Cambodia, in those first six, seven months, working for a Christian organization as well. And then re returning back to uh, Australia and some of the difficulties in, you know, um, integrating back into my family home as a new Muslim and yeah, the community here in Australia. So I arrived in Jakarta on Friday on a Jumah day and I had messaged my friends that I had previously worked in Indonesia to let them know that I was arriving and that also I had accepted Islam. Alhamdulillah, they were very excited to meet me. They actually met me at the airport, got treated very well. They drove me into my accommodation. They told me that they will see me the next day for Jumah. I let them know that I hadn't learned how to pray uh, yet and I was very nervous about about the whole experience. I hadn't even been to a mosque at this point. It'd been about a month and a half since I had accepted Islam. It was very much a struggle. Didn't know really where to go. There wasn't too much guidance in regards to, you know, learning about how to practice as a new Muslim around my particular age. They said, no, 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 no. We'll pick you up. We'll hop on the back of the scooter and we'll go to Masjid Istiqal. I had no idea the beauty of this masjid. I believe it's like the third or fourth biggest mosque in the world and um, yeah despite me sort of expressing my doubts they did not hear any of it the brothers picked me up hop on the back of the scooter they gifted me a Indonesian hat a top a topi I believe is what it's called a sorong as well um, so I had all the appropriate um, clothes to pray uh, Jumah. Yeah, we went to Friday prayer, we entered the masjid and we kind of got sort of split up a bit, um, which is fine, alhamdulillah. But I was incredibly nervous. I had no idea how to pray at this point. Even though I did watch a couple of videos, I had really memorized, I had forgotten. I intended and I took a seat with inside the mosque whenever someone, <laughs> whenever someone would, you know, stand next to me and pray. Now that I know, you know, sunnah prayers, I would um, just get up and start praying next to them because I didn't know if this was part of what was required. I didn't know that it was optional. So every single time I would get up and, you know, just mimic the movements of the person who would be praying next to me. Alhamdulillah. My first Jumar experience was, it was beautiful, especially at that mosque and with my friends there as well. I remember just Allah's name just resonating through the chambers, through the ceilings. The then coming from that mosque was just beautiful. And that was, I guess, the start, the start of when I truly made that, that step forward in practicing my Islam. The next day I said, even though I still hadn't fully memorized the movements, let alone any of the words, I said, I will, I'll begin praying one prayer, one salah a day. And I began with Dhuhr and I thought that was going to be achievable. I was on a holiday as it wasn't working. We'll do that. We'll just stick with one. We'll be consistent. Alhamdulillah, I stuck with that for about a week, then proceeded on to Asar and stuck with that. And then Fajr stuck with that until all five daily prayers were there. There was definitely some difficulties around like remembering what words I had to say, but the advice that was given was just do with what you know, read from your phone or a, um, a book or whatever material you have that's helping you guide your prayer. And I did that, alhamdulillah, and I just learned bit by bit. It was also during this time in Indonesia that yeah, I let my my brother and my, my stepdad know that I had accepted Islam. I wasn't quite ready yet when I was back in Australia to share with them. I was quite nervous in how they were going to respond. I didn't want to, you know, lose my brother and I didn't want to upset my stepfather. I knew I had to share with them and I did let my, my mother know that I will share with them. So I prepared a message and I sent it. Alhamdulillah, the response was very good from my brother and quite a bit of caution, I'd probably say in regards to my father-in-law. He was a little bit, I guess, shocked by it. I think he wanted to, wanted to understand more and learn more about my choices about this is a big step that he wasn't aware of, which he struggled with. It was completely 
yeah, it was a new thing for himself as well. And, you know, when I arrived back into Australia, I definitely heard some of his uh, concerns. I let them know, alhamdulillah, and that was a big step moving forward for myself. Then proceeded on to Cambodia, alhamdulillah. I had picked up my five salahs by this point within, you know, two, three weeks, alhamdulillah. And that really helped with keeping the consistency of, you know, practicing as a Muslim. This is what a Muslim does and being surrounded by Muslims every single day. Um, when I was in Indonesia, I was always with friends and family over there. Alhamdulillah, that really helped with my journey, especially in those first few months and helped me up, set me up for success. Really, when I was in Cambodia, I was surrounded by Christians. It gave me that confidence that I needed as a new Muslim, alhamdulillah, to identify as being Muslim and to practice being as practice as a Muslim. So I was working for a non-for-profit in Cambodia, a Christian organization, and I didn't hesitate to share quite early on because of the offer of alcohol and um, other things that you know, I was quite clear that no, I don't drink and this is the reason why, alhamdulillah. And that really set the framework for who I am as a Muslim today, alhamdulillah. Them being a Christian, practice, practicing Christians, doing missionary work over there, they were very accepting. I think they were just happy that, you know, alhamdulillah, that I'm a person of God and I'm over here working with them doing, you know, serving serving God, serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were accepting. It really built my confidence up as identifying as Muslim. They were nothing but supportive the whole way. They did obviously continue to offer these types of things with no sort of underlying sort of intention, bad intention behind it. Did have to continue to really keep firm upon you know, who I am as a person and my best practicing, my practice as a Muslim and being the best version of myself, alhamdulillah. So I re returned back to Australia um, due to family situation. Yeah, moved back into my family home, alhamdulillah. It did require a little bit of adjustment for my family who I was living with my mum in terms of eating, in terms of praying, in terms of just the way I would, my, my personality, my, my character throughout the day, things of not being comfortable around events, that type of thing, especially the, the, the one that probably most uh, reverts experience here in the West is the Christmas. That's always a very difficult time. Alhamdulillah, it was, it was easy. The, the difficulty came when it, in regards to perceived difficulty, I'd probably say, was in regards to my father-in-law. He it's quite serious and concerned. That was that was challenging, and it did require alhamdulillah to draw upon that confidence in that identity of this is who I am, this is my journey, this is what I accept. As simple as that, alhamdulillah. And while at the start it wasn't received as open arms and warm and loving as what my mother was, with the continuous continuously identifying that this is who I am, alhamdulillah, it became easier and easier and it was accepted, alhamdulillah. The rest of my family, alhamdulillah, sort of just fell into line after that and accepted who I was. One part that really helped in this journey was uh, joining a, a, a Muslim and Islamic non-for-profit organization here in Australia during Ramadan time. So I returned during Ramadan time. That was alhamdulillah, very, very helpful because we spent a lot of time at the masjids, a lot of time ha um, handing pamphlets out and collecting zakah and even just learning about the concept of zakah. Like the, the role in itself required, again, that extra the extra step in, in learning about Islam. Alhamdulillah, my, my entire journey, my entire revert story, journey, experience, while at the start was incredibly painful, it was brought in a lot of ease and a lot of, a lot of guidance. And I, I honestly felt that throughout the entire, the entire journey, I was, I was guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and alhamdulillah made as, as easy as possible. At this point, alhamdulillah, my family was on very supportive terms with myself. Naturally, my my friends before accepting Islam, I started naturally distancing, distancing myself, alhamdulillah. I began to build stronger and closer friendships with uh, the, the community here in Australia, alhamdulillah. The next big challenge for my family in terms of difficulty in accepting, while now, alhamdulillah, they're completely on board, was marriage <laughs> and what that would look like in terms of 
a, a sister wearing hijab, the, what a family would look like, alhamdulillah. And that whole process in itself was pretty, pretty tough for myself, learning, you know, the ways, the right, the wrong ways, um, especially growing up here in the West. Alhamdulillah, look forward to, to sharing that with you. If you have any questions or if anything resonated with you, please share in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Don't uh, forget to subscribe to receive notifications if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video.